As one of the preeminent trailblazers in audio technology, almost every piece of recorded music we hear owes something to Rupert Neve. His innovation-driven career spanned the globe over the course of more than 80 years. It began by tinkering with radios as a child in Argentina to creating his first modern recording consoles back home in England. His life eventually took him to Texas, where he continued to refine analog circuit design for digital recording. We owe much to Neve's genius, which forever changed the course of recording forever. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. I hope you're doing marvelously well. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. Of course, if you're into production, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Rupert Neve was born in Newton Abbott, England in 1926. His father was a missionary for the British and Foreign Bible Society, which brought him to Buenos Aires as a child. It was there that he took an interest in electronics, designing amplifiers and radio receivers as young as age 13. By the time he was 17, he volunteered to serve in the Royal Signals during World War II, which provided communications support to the British Army. After the war, he returned to civilian life in England, where he purchased a van and built a mobile system which served as a recording rig as well as a public address control room. He captured choirs, opera performances, music festivals, and public events, all on 78 RPM lacquer discs before the days of tape. His mobile recording and PA system broadcast some of those in the highest offices in England, including Princess Elizabeth, now Queen Elizabeth II, and Winston Churchill. Becoming a designer, Neve worked various positions throughout the 50s, at Rediffusion, which was a forerunner to the early cable TV systems, at Ferguson Radio, and as a chief engineer at a transformer and loudspeaker manufacturer. The loudspeakers that they were producing were pretty monstrous at the time. Neve's natural inclination was to innovate, resulting in a bookcase enclosure. And he quickly found a client who wanted to purchase 500 units. He offered the design to his boss at the company, who wasn't interested in taking the new contract. Neve's entrepreneurial spirit took over, and he started his first company, CQ Audio. CQ Audio was a short-lived endeavor, but it gave Rupert Neve critical insight and experience in producing large quantities, from acquiring raw materials to sales and delivery. Neve designed and produced all of CQ Audio's products, including the CQ Reproducer, one of the first small hi-fi bookcase loudspeaker systems, QFlex, a speaker with flexible walls which radiated acoustic energy outward, CQ Twin 4, hi-fi stereo amplifiers, Tetrac, a standalone bipole tweeter resembling a pyramid, the CQ Tape Heart, a stereo tape recorder and replay unit. Rupert Neve formed Neve Electronics in 1961, from which point he would be credited with inventing the modern recording console. From the very start, Neve Electronics specialized in producing the highest quality professional audio consoles and systems, using Class A designs and the finest components available. His first project was a custom mixer commissioned by Desmond Leslie, a music concrete composer. In 1964, Neve designed and built the world's first transistor-based console for Philips Recording Studio in London. By this point, Neve Electronics was firmly established, and the company had built several custom consoles for distinguished clients, including Beatles producer George Martin. Neve Electronics built on this success and moved into their own factory. And by 1968, they'd broken into the broadcast field with the 2254 Compressor Limiter for ABC Weekend Television in the UK. It was also around this time that Neve products became available in North America. The 70s was a period of major innovation at Neve Electronics, in which Rupert designed some of the most recognizable equipment. He eventually sold Neve Electronics in 1973, though he continued working alongside the new owners until leaving altogether in 1975. He then entered into a 10-year contract not to produce competing products, at which point he embarked into live sound reinforcement as ARN consultants. 
This was not before developing the most desirable audio equipment the recording industry has ever known. Neve designed his most iconic piece of equipment in 1970, the hallmark of the Neve sound for now over five decades. The 1073 preamp was born. The module was designed for a custom A88 console installed at Wessex Sound Studios in London. The 24-channel desk had already impressive capabilities for its time, but the debut of the 1073 preamp was a real breakthrough. The 1073 remains one of the most desirable sounds ever. Class A circuitry, power, clarity, and undeniable character make it one of the greatest innovations in recording technology. The 1073 includes a three-band EQ with fixed 12K high-frequency shelf, along with a switchable low and mid-range bands with cut and boost controls. Below, there is a passive third-order 18 dB per octave high-pass filter. The module was originally never intended to be a standalone unit. Due to the relative scarcity of the originals, the 1073 has spawned dozens of reproductions over the years, including both hardware and, of course, software. The BCM-10 console. This sidecar was initially conceived as a broadcast console, but it found its way into recording studios. It was fitted with 1066 preamps, which were the precursor to 1073s. Pete Townsend of The Who was the first customer, and he still uses it to this day. The Neve 8048. Just a few years after making waves with the 1073 and BCM-10, Neve ushered in the era of modern large format consoles in 1974 with the 8048. Featuring 32 channels of brand new 1081 preamps and the famous 2254 compressor limiter, the 8048 was used by artists such as Queen, Led Zeppelin, David Bowie, Deep Purple, Iggy Pop, and many others. The Neve A4792. This custom desk was one of the first three designed for George Martin's Air Studios. The first, serial number A4792, was built and installed at Air on the island of Montserrat. The other two made their way to Air London. The desk was used on albums like Synchronicity by The Police and Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits. It also played host to Paul McCartney, the Rolling Stones, Lou Reed, Elton John, and many others. In 1985, Rupert and Evelyn Neve incorporated a company called Focusrite Limited. A new range of outboard equipment was launched to meet the modern studio's demands. Rupert created the Focusrite Forte console. This had more modern sonics with wider bandwidth and greater flexibility. Only 13 of these were ever made, and only a handful remain in use today. After that, he wanted to bring the sound of these consoles to a wider audience, so he created the Vertical ISA 110 Mic Pre with four band EQ and the very rare 130 dynamic modules. After creating the console and vertical modules, he stopped designing for Focusrite. In 1989, he started his consultancy for AMEC. Focusrite was eventually under enormous pressure to get back into making consoles. The company conceded and accepted orders for eight desks. Though the audio part of the design was complete and proven, the digital control side of the design, outside Rupert's field of expertise, ran into problems and delays. Unfortunately, Focusrite ran out of time and money. The company was liquidated and sold in 1989. It was reincorporated as Focusrite Audio Engineering, for whom Rupert Neve has never designed any products. The new millennium, Rupert Neve Designs. Rupert and Evelyn Neve became US citizens in 2002, after moving to Texas in the mid-90s. ARN Consultants became a US corporation and went into business with Taylor Guitars to design preamps fitted within the guitar's body. This was Neve's first foray into the world of musical instruments, and it was met with great success. In 2005, Rupert Neve Designs was born. The idea was to develop a new range of products based on Neve's lasting sonic principles, but with the features and versatility the digital world demands. Rupert Neve Design announced the Portico series in 2005 to much acclaim, 
The Portico series modules are high quality analog building blocks for the front and back ends of digital systems. In the years since the release, the Portico series has garnered many important industry awards, including nine tech awards, multiple PAR excellence awards, mix certified hit awards, and an MIPA award among others. The original color scheme featured gray powder coating with a black and red inlay design available in both horizontal and vertical configurations. The first eight units were the 5012 Dual Pre, the 5042 True Tape FX, the 5032 Mic Pre EQ, the 5043 Dual Mono Stereo Compressor, the 5033 Five Band EQ, the 5016 Mic Pre DI, the 5014 Stereo Field Editor, and the 5015 Mic Pre Compressor. Rupert Neves' design is ultimately the culmination of over six decades of Rupert Neves' legendary design work. Within his leadership and expertise, the R&D team of engineers preserved the revered elements of his most prized vintage designs, while thoughtfully advancing and refining their feature sets to meet the needs of a modern recording engineer. In 2021, we look back on Rupert Neves' genius with admiration. As engineers and producers and music lovers, we owe much to Neve's designs. Many, many classic albums have been made using his equipment. The Neve sound is universally renowned as one of the most desirable sonic characteristics ever. It's hard to imagine where recording technology would be without his forward-thinking innovations. Rupert Neve defined the benchmark for what recording audio should sound like. On February the 12th, 2021, we lost Rupert Neve, a huge, hugely important part of our industry. I'm not sure if any one single person has really had as great an effect as him. Outside of the incredible musicians and songwriters and producers that we all know and love, there is nobody bigger. There's many, many talented people who have created wonderful pieces of equipment but Rupert's legacy is without match. And his genius will be with us forever. And it will be, as I said earlier, a benchmark by which all future equipment or future recordings will be judged. Rupert, thank you for everything you gave us. Rest in peace. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Please, if you haven't, check out the other videos in this series. Um, Leave any comments and questions below. I do endeavor to answer as many as I can. Thank you for watching. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, au revoir. Adios, tschüss, goodbye.